Hello, I'm Talha Nadeem, Senior Economic Analyst in the Monetary Policy and Research Group of the State Bank of Pakistan. In this SPP Explainer video, we'll discuss the concept, construction, and interpretation of the Real Effective Exchange Rate Index, commonly known as REAR. The concept of Real Effective Exchange Rate occupies a prominent place in macroeconomic analysis. The REAR helps analyze a country's competitiveness for its trade in goods and services with its trading partner and competitor countries. This analysis is made relative to a fixed point in time and can involve from one to many countries. Before I talk further about the REAR, let me first explain what a real exchange rate really is. It is defined as the number of units of foreign goods which can be exchanged with one unit of domestic goods. Let's suppose that the price of one unit of domestic good is rupees 800 and for a similar foreign good it is dollar 10. To know how many units of foreign good one unit of domestic good can purchase, first we need to convert the foreign price into the domestic currency. Given a nominal exchange rate of rupees 160.18 to a dollar on February 3, 2021, the domestic price of one unit of foreign good is therefore around rupees 1600. To get the real exchange rate, we need to divide rupees 1600 by rupees 800, which is equal to 2. This means that two units of domestic good can be exchanged with one unit of foreign good. Think of it this way. The real exchange rate is the rate at which goods can be exchanged, while your nominal exchange rate, which you see in the newspaper, is the rate at which currencies are exchanged. Now let me turn to rear. In practice, it is difficult to calculate real exchange rates of every currency and for every country, since countries generally trade with a number of countries and transactions are in terms of a number of currencies. This problem is resolved by calculating it as an index of bilateral exchange rates, weighted by the share of each trading partner in imports, exports, or total foreign trade. Since rear is an index number, it is free from any measuring unit and is constructed with reference to a particular year called the base year. It is important to note that the choice of the base year is arbitrary and subject to change over time. To calculate rear, you first need to calculate a nominal effective exchange rate or near and a relative price index or RPI. To compute near, since there are many countries involved, we first take the weighted average of all nominal exchange rates of all countries in the basket vis-a-vis -vis one currency, such as the US dollar. Before doing that, it's important to note that the exchange rate of each country is expressed in terms of the US dollar that one unit of domestic currency can buy. In the next step, like in the case of NIR, we calculate the ratio of domestic price to weighted average foreign prices to get the relative price index, that is RPI. REAR is then simply calculated by multiplying NEAR with the relative price index. Currently, the State Bank is using weights of 37 major trading partners and competitors of Pakistan for REAR calculation. These weights represent not only bilateral trade volumes, but also a competition in the third market. For example, the weight for China, which is 29.12%, not only reflects the trade volume between Pakistan and China, but also the competition among Pakistani and Chinese firms in a third market like the USA. Before moving on to interpretation of the rear, let's recall that in the bilateral exchange rate of PKR and US dollar, an increase in value means a depreciation of PKR, as more PKR are now required to buy one US dollar. However, since rear index is calculated by defining exchange rate in terms of domestic currency, an increase in the real index means real appreciation of local currency against the basket of trading partners and competitors' currencies, and vice versa. You can see that, in recent years, the real index has declined from the peak of 123.5 in April 2017 to 99.4 in November 2020. This indicates a PKR depreciation of around 19.6% in real terms against the trading partners' and competitors' currencies. Notwithstanding the usefulness of the rear as an indicator of the country's trade competitiveness, it is often prone to two common misinterpretations in the context of exchange rate valuation. First, 
Appreciation of rear is often confused with the concept of currency overvaluation, while depreciation is mixed with undervaluation. However, the changes in rear index and the currency valuation are two separate concepts. For instance, the rear can appreciate regardless of the currency being overvalued, undervalued, or even near its equilibrium. The same possibilities apply when rear depreciates. And second, movement of the rear index away from its base year value of 100 is often interpreted as the overvaluation or undervaluation of the park rupee. The base year for rear is just for reference though, and doesn't imply that the currency was in equilibrium during that year. For example, if the rear index is at 95 and the value for the base year is 100, it doesn't necessarily mean that the currency is undervalued by 5% compared to the base year. For assessment of an exchange rate valuation, a much deeper analysis is required from the perspective of medium-term sustainability of the external sector by asking the question that what sort of exchange rate makes your external sector sustainable in the medium term, given the history of your country. In this complex analysis, you account for several cross-country factors such as foreign exchange reserves, fiscal balance, credit demand, demographics, real interest rate, country risks, workers' remittances, and other global financial indicators. This brings us to the end of this explainer video. For more technical details and data on REAR, do visit the SPP website. Goodbye.